while ago I issued you a, a mindfulness challenge. You said to me that you've tried it a few times, the meditation thing, and you always struggled with it. You were never really able to figure out how to get your mind to basically shut up and relax and you stress yourself out about it and all this kind of stuff. So we issued you a challenge and the community a challenge. I'm not sure how many people took part in it, but it'd be great to know. But um, a seven day challenge, learn how to do mindfulness meditation using an app I've used, which I find really good. And that particular seven day course I've also found really, really good. So let us know how have you been getting on and give us some info. Tell us all. Yeah, so, so the app that you suggested to use was Insight Timer, which is available on the App Store and the Google Play Store. Um, it's free of charge. It does have a wide range of different courses. It's not just the seven-day Learn to Meditate course. It has a wide range of different uh, methods and uses. for Hashtag uh, not affiliated. Course. Not affiliated. Would love to be. <laughs> Inside timer if you're listening and want to uh want to help us out absolutely feel free to get in touch but uh no this is just it's something that you used before and you suggested it to me and we suggested it to our listeners um so how have i been getting on with it so i started the the night you suggested it okay. and as you said it's a seven day seven day is probably a probably not the the right way to describe it it i would classify it as a seven session course because i'm going to be like straight up i haven't been doing it every day yeah and it's like i think that's kind of the truth of it i think some some days you're going to find time for it some days you're simply going to forget um and... but i think that's something that we talked about as well right that's yeah that's part of the journey it's figuring out what works for you and it's not it's about being non-judgmental with yourself. You can't do one yeah. day. You feel like not doing one day. Do it the next day. And that's that's pretty much exactly what I've been doing. So I've been trying to take blame out of the conversation. And I've been trying to kind of... Because normally with something like this, I like me and pretty much every other person on the planet who has ADHD... Uh, which I learned was several million. Yeah, pretty much all of us will like take things on and be like, oh yeah, this is going to be the next great thing that I'm going to do and it's going to change my life and it's going to be amazing. And it typically lasts a couple of weeks. And I've tried to go into this with that mindset because as, as well as you said, but as I've said previously, meditation and mind, mindfulness in general has been something I've being like yeah that'll be a great fit for me i like i like how the image of that looks on me in my yeah. head um but in actual practice um it was just me sitting with plinky plonky music and candles and me <laughs> talking to my talking to my brain uh which i didn't find very restful or very mindful at all i um, have some really good plinky plonky music remind me to share it with you absolutely that's going to be one for a uh, sticky note but yeah, I struggled with that because I was just basically narrating the experience in my head when mm -hmm. when I tried it before. In the challenge you issued me, you talked about how to approach it, how to deal with that. And what I would suggest to people is to go back and listen to that episode because it's not necessarily an episode. It's almost a tutorial <laughs> of how to approach this for people like me who don't know how to access it or don't know how to kind of penetrate that mindfulness bubble. So I tried to approach it with that in mind this time around and not get so in my head about it. Um, So the first time I did it, it was basically like all the other times I was trying to like, I was like overdoing it. I was almost creating this like Zen space with like, again, my plinky plunky music um, and like healing crystals and, and perfect <laughs> ambiance. And that's just not reality. And that's, that's what I kind of learned. So at the time I was doing it, my daughter, Juliet, who is 18 months now was in the middle of a tantrum. And 
for people who have met Juliet in in real life will know that her tantrums are glorious. And that's the only (laughs) word that can be used to describe them. And Graham was trying to manage her tantrum. And his technique for managing the tantrum was to kind of meet her tornado with her tornado. So that was going on at the same time. So I kind of tried to use that, if you get me. So I was in my my little Zen space. Now I was still kind of narrating everything that was going on. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, yep, we're going to we're going to do we're going to practice mindfulness. This is me practicing mindfulness. I'm going to be so relaxed, I'm going to be so zen. Let's do our breath. And like that was kind of the same way it was before. But then I remembered something you said in that what I'm going to call a tutorial episode where you were like if you hear a bird listen to the bird like be present with that that sound and then come back to yourself and i was like oh i can do that so i can use my 18 month old screaming at <laughs> ear splitting levels which my watch actually confirmed was ear splitting <laughs> levels to be present and i listened to her shriek but that that's that's all i did i didn't think like what can I do? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? I was like, it, it's something that's happening. And it's the first time, and it's probably a weird example, and it probably makes me sound like a terrible parent, but I was able to use that to kind of go, I'm being present in this. And then it, because I did that, it snapped me right out of it. And it was, I started yeah. narrating my brain again. So the first session w- went like that. And then I approached it again the next day and I was like, the first session for me was just really to kind of get the ball rolling to like get my body back into, this is something we're going to try again. Um, the next session was a bit different and like there were kind of like, let's try this in your day to day life. And that's part of the sessions and they're each about 10 minutes long. Mm -hmm. The second session was, It was definitely different, but it was still like, I'd say like 70, 30, like I was still very much like how I was when I would approach these things in the past, but I was like, I'm not going to overthink this. I'm going to quiet my brain. I'm going to listen to, to the words and I'm going to follow the words and I'm going to let that be the only thought I'm thinking right now. And that was that was different you know it's like that was that that wasn't something i'd ever experienced before where it was like i'd never had that kind of revelation where this is the only thing i'm thinking because Mm. i'd tie myself up with look at me being so good at mindfulness this is the only thought i'm thinking because it's the only one i'm thinking right now and (laughs) it quietened my brain in a way that i'd only ever really experienced with medication yeah. Um, where it was like the only thought that was in my brain was in through the nose, out through the mouth, and also then kind of absently hearing things around me, not trying to block them out, but mm-hmm. like just being aware of them. And again, it was things like cars or like even my phone vibrating beside me, things like that, where things that I would have been frustrated by or irritated by as as distractions, they became part of the experience. So whereas before, like, as I said, my phone would vibrate and I'd go, oh, I have to deal with that. No, I can't be thinking this. Oh no, I've let a thought come in. Right, push the thought away. And then like, it would be bothering me that I didn't know who the message was from or was it something I was waiting on? And then I would be blaming myself for letting myself think those thoughts. And then I'd be like, Zen, 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 get back to Zen, get back to Zen. But with this, it was like, I acknowledged it happened and that was all, you know? Yeah. And I'd never experienced anything like that before because uh, again, as anyone who knows me, if you text me, you can expect a reply within 2.3 seconds because my phone is pretty much always in my hand. Um, and I'm very needy and I want everyone to be my friend. If you send me a text, I'm going to reply. Um, I don't know any of these kind of social etiquette, game playing kind of things. <laughs> I'm just like, let's, re- let's all talk. Let's all be friends. Yay. But yeah, it was weird. And that's kind of, 
like that's kind of expanded out from there more so and like that's in the actual sessions yeah i'm still 50 50 when it comes to dealing with it on a day-to-day basis and dealing with it's the wrong word but being present day to day i'm still yeah. very much like i it, like the honest truth is i forget to be present if that makes sense like i'm like i forget to use it as a tool i forget to even think about it and it's like where I'm, the times i'm kind of doing, doing it now is close to bedtime like mm-hmm. my husband is off doing his like nighttime routine and i'm like okay i've got 10 minutes to devote to myself and that's the time i've like dedicated <clears throat> that i'm gonna try this uh, i'm gonna kind of give it give it a little bit of time i haven't quite gotten to a point where i'm like okay let's take a few breaths consciously now mm-hmm. having said that i think there has been a bit of an unconscious shift because yeah. there's been a few times where there's been situations at work or situations with my child who I think is 50% goblin at this point. Situations with her where it's been frustrating, to say the least, where I would have felt my blood pressure go up or I would have felt like frustration creep in, where I felt myself take a few breaths and then approach the situation. Again, that hasn't been in a, a conscious way. And I'm only kind of realizing it now as we're talking and as I'm thinking about that. That mm-hmm. hasn't been something that I've mentally done. It's just been something that has happened. And I suppose that's because I'm repeating. Like some some of those sessions, like when you finish a session, it's like, ready. To, like let's say you do day two. And it's like, ready to start day three? And it's like, hang on, I'm the needy one. And I'm even saying this is a bit much. Yeah. Uh, I like So I have been going back and replaying some of them. And I think because I'm doing that, because I'm allowing myself the time to do that, I think it is kind of rewiring some some of the L synapses in my brain. And it's kind of bringing in the method of remembering to, to breathe. And as, as yeah. simple as that sounds, like we all do it, but it's even the taking those minutes and being aware that you're doing it without the thoughts behind it, it's so powerful. And it's so hard to describe it to someone who hasn't done it. Or I'm like, I was the biggest skeptic about this as a tool <laughs> because my brain, like, I was like, to anyone who knows me, it's like, mine is a brain that does not stop mine is a mouth that never closes it's uh, there's a story <laughs> oh, um, okay let's finish up there for the evening thank you <laughs> um so yeah to to bring that around what is your like you're the one who brought this to me so have you been trying it again i know you're currently demedicated a declawed yeah. Um, so is it something you've, is it a toolbox you've reopened? Um, so yeah, and I'm glad you brought up the demedication because I'm sitting here listening to you yawning away. My eyes are like so squinty. I'm like, it's nothing to do with the content. (laughs) It's nothing to do with the (laughs) conversation. It's just pure fatigue from lack of medication. And I'm like that from the moment I wake up in the morning, uh, right through until I'm, crying because i need to go to bed um if but now anyone wants to learn what's going on there with Pearl harv go back and listen to our last episode he goes into yeah. it in a lot more detail and uh it, it's it's a tough listen but it's a good listen but yeah go on sorry yeah so as as much as i wanted to and as much as i need to i think we discussed this when when i issued the challenge you know i need it i know i need it i know the benefits of it i know how much it means when I do uh, implement the mindfulness and stuff like that. And at that point, I think I was still medicated. Um, so even at that stage with all of the, the power and the, the medication juice behind me, I still felt like I could do it. I still felt like it would make a big difference. And now moving into the demedication zone, um, obviously I need it even more so. But uh, I have not, unfortunately, um, been able to do it. I feel like maybe, like you say, you know, on the kind of subconscious level, 
I do it. So when you were talking about the Julia tantrum thing, I was like, it's it's really interesting that you latched onto that because that's kind of how it works for me as well. So like one of the things that I do, I found this on like YouTube. I don't know when it was, a long time ago. It was just kind of just random video or random group of videos that I found. And their tagline was seek discomfort, right? I don't know if you know what it is. I'm sure people watching or listening will know what it is or who the channel is, but I haven't got a clue. But it resonated really, really uh, deeply with me because I was like, nobody seeks discomfort. Like, no, nobody wants to be uncomfortable. But in doing that kind of going out of your way to get to the discomfort, life becomes actually a little bit more comfortable outside of those situations because you're changing your kind of maximum and minimum level of comfort. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So indeed. That tantrum is exactly what you've done there. You've gone out of your way and you've you've seeked discomfort and you've kind of added that to your arsenal now that, okay, shit, when Julia throws one of those 93 decibel uh, tantrums, it's not the end of the world. It's not something I need to kind of go into fight or flight mode or panic mode about. I know I can be calm and I know I can kind of work through it. And one of the things that popped into my mind is completely unrelated, but kind of still fits in with that kind of being present and, you know, the discomfort side of it is one of my jobs in the house is to put the bins out every Monday evening. So I do that. Sometimes it's wet out. Sometimes I'm in socks and I love, love to go out and do the bins in my socks when it's wet. I will physically walk past my shoes rather than put them on. I know how people hate, like just even the thought of going out and getting their socks wet. And I'm like, my skin is trying to get off my body right now. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, because people hate it, it's like an extra kind of benefit for me to do it. Um, And that's one of the kind of little tiny things that I do throughout the day on a kind of subconscious present mindfulness type thing but now i have not been doing any meditations and i really really want to and one of the things that i actually i meant to say it to you earlier on but i'd forgotten completely what i wanted to say to you was what a shock start doing we should start doing live meditations so i think we were yeah. talking about doing some lives and yeah it'd be great to do just you know conversations and kind of updates and stuff like that on lives but i think if we were to do some live mindfulness meditations, uh, that could be really cool. Yeah. And would I'm forced us into it as well, you know? I think, yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board for that. And I think a lot of other people would be as well. Yeah. But I think to get there, I think you need to reopen insight timer and you need to start again at the beginning. Yeah. True. So as is a time honored mm-hmm. tradition now at ADH Darkcast, I'm going to issue you a challenge that before this week is out, you are going to restart that. Okay. Done deal. Do you accept it? Accept it. Challenge acceptified. And just going back to your uh, seek discomfort, that is literally everything that we have built with this podcast was because we were <laughs> seeking discomfort. We we're uncomfortable and we did it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, you look at us a year ago, there's no way I'd be talking to anybody <laughs> for this amount of time. My wife's yeah. always kind of telling me, you talk to Stephen more than you talk to me. And it's but true. That's, because, that's the unbridled know, sexual tension as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Between my wife and myself, we can't talk to each other. <laughs> I know what you that's meant. It's all, it's all to annoy for me. <laughs> No, no, it's all, it's all, it's all for me. I know, I, I yeah. know it's not, but it is, and I will, um, I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. But yeah, um, shit. Now I can. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So like we were, um, this is the where's the meds? Somebody this sent is me the sexual meds. tension. I've, I, I've distracted you <laughs> with, with with that again. Sorry. Oh God's sake! Close your mouth, Roberts. <laughs> um, Creates a better seal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is a hostile work environment that's what this is 
know. Where's HR? Oh my god. Anyway, go go back to what we were originally talking about. So, yes, we have seeked discomfort, but I don't think we've necessarily seeked it in that kind of way. We had like a vision in our minds of what we wanted to do and what we wanted to pursue and achieve. And rather than seeking the discomfort actively, we kind of passively came across it along the long and winding road of creating stuff and yeah. rather than shit ourselves and turn our tails and leg it down the road we faced it kind of head on and supported each other through the dodgy bits and we shut ourselves anyway wiped ourselves off yeah. and kept going exactly and we're still doing that yeah <laughs> it's right now <laughs> um yeah no that's that's exactly it that's the thing we've uh we've just kept going we felt those shitty feelings of I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, and then we did it anyway. So I wouldn't have it any other way, and I wouldn't have anyone else beside me doing it. So hooray for us. Ah oh, shucks. You know I'm emotionally barren, so yeah. I'm not even gonna pretend to to feel something from that. So yeah, this is actually something else. I have been trying to get a hug. Now, this man in my experience we used to live fairly close together and we used to be in each other's house fairly commonly and I couldn't leave the house without getting a hug and that was always instigated by him. So I have been trying since we set up this podcast. Is this fact? I didn't notice. This is well, fact. Obviously yes. I knew it at the time, but I have no memories of these things. But Yeah, I used to give yourself and Rachel a hug and actually it would be you. I thought your fascination with hugs was that you never got one from me. That's what I No, thought. I used to get them all the time. Oh, okay. You used to be a very huggy young man. Now you're just a bitter, grumpy young man. <laughs> I was um, always a bitter, grumpy young man. I'm obviously just living out there in the fresh air, kind of changed things. Yeah, I was, uh, it was, I was going to say it was the, my influence, but uh, <laughs> the yeah, I've been, for the past six months, since we've been kind of spending a lot more time around each other, I've been uh, requesting hugs. And my requests have gone unfulfilled, so. Yes. Okay, here's a challenge for you. Put a put a milestone down on the table. And when we hit that milestone, it has to be a reasonable milestone. I will give you the biggest hug that you've ever received. And you have to keep, the, you have to keep your hands very, very well visible. They can be visible and still inappropriate but i think you mean above the the top yeah shelf. let's keep them definitely you know at least four full from the ground i can work with that um okay i'll tell you what when we hit a thousand subscribers you owe me a thousand subscribers on youtube you mm. owe me that i think that's too small i don't think it is i think it's too small like i was looking at the other app that kind of helps you figure out youtube and stuff like that yeah and the original goal, I think, is like 150 subscribers. Then the second goal is like 300. Then it goes to two or 500. And from 500, it jumps up to 4,600. So I think realistically, you're looking at 4,600. We're now let's split the difference. We'll go 2,500. Okay, deal. Okay, 2,500. What are we going to do when we're talking about that? <laughs> you can't do it. You can't, do it. You can't, you can't just. Leave well enough alone. We're going oh to need a, they'll be for the, um, Patreon. We'll have to get that set up for them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, I think anyway, we'll leave it there. Anyway, yeah. anyway that's, where that's were we? What were we talking about? I like um, it, though. I like it. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's a good goal. 2,500. It's, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like a constantly moving goal. It's like so, I think we talked about this, about like my grades in college and stuff like that. You're happy. You have an idea of what you'd be happy with in your head. And then when you get to that, it's like, I'm so not happy with this. I need more. I need more. I need more. It's like a constant train. So yeah, I am a very crazy. And once we get there, we'll be like, this is shit. Like we yeah, need to get more, more. More, more. I'm a very emotionally needy person. So I need that hug. So I'm going to implore everyone who's listened to this. <laughs> It's not going to cost you anything. Just just press that little subscribe button. 
Steven while you're at it, feel free to like and comment. There, the custom people subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Yeah, no, just just you know, bring me bring me one little click closer to to my dreams. Yes. Those 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 squishy hugs that I used to get back in the day <laughs> that I've been longing for for so long. And squishier now as well. The squishier the better. More so pushing, right. pushing. Let's let's circle back. I'm on my corporate speak. Jesus. Let's 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 go let's go back to what we were originally talking about. The mindfulness. You mentioned day one, day two. How how many yeah. days have you hour no how many, how many well sessions? one how many how many sessions have you done? And two, how far are you through the seven session um sequence? So even though it's been longer than a week since we started that or seven sessions worth. I, I've only gotten as far as five. I finished five. I have six and seven still to do uh, because I've been going back and reusing yeah. some of them. And as I said, some of the days I just haven't found myself in a space where I want to explore mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Some days I am, some days I, I'm not, and that's okay. And it's important to make sure that you don't blame yourself for the days where you don't. I just dropped my beads. So it's important to make sure that you keep that in mind as well. And that's what I'm trying to do. So some days I just want to read comics at the same time that I'd be exploring mindfulness and that in and of itself is also another method. It's a way of being present too. Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, I've been allowing myself to do that, but actually actively using the app and following the sessions, uh, I have completed five sessions but i've gone back and reused some of them and how did you find the do so you kind of gave a little bit of info on the first two but three four and five how did they compare you know was there anything that kind of resonated with you in a different way you mentioned the second one was kind of a little bit more um impactful but we're yeah. like different it, it's been a long time since i did this so I know there's a, a few different techniques and stuff like that, but I'm yeah. wondering, is there anything along the line that kind of triggered you in a different way? Or did you take anything specifically more deeply from any of the other sessions or are they just kind of just going through the motions or yeah, that kind of yeah, stuff? So everything I've said outside of my talking about the actual experience that was live about the sessions, everything I've talked about has been kind of an amalgamation of my experience of the other sessions and that has been deliberate because i know how i would have reacted if people have told me what the content of the sessions was going to be so it would have set like a pre-expectation almost and i would have kind of it would have changed or shaped what i expected the the experience to be and I didn't want that for myself. And I think that's what I'm trying to put back out there. I want, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about how it's affected me. I don't want to talk about what the experience has been. So it does go through different methods. It goes through um, different ways of being present, different examples of how to utilize that. But I, I deliberately don't want to talk about that. So. What the way I've been talking about it, how I've been using it, is kind of an amalgamation of my reflections after the fact, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. And the reason I was asking that is because I remember specifically there's one session, and I don't remember exactly which session it is, but there was one session that it was almost like um it just elevated me to a, a higher level of like awareness and consciousness you know you you talk about these or you hear about these people being enlightened and stuff like this and you're like yeah the fuck are these people talking about like but this we're going to need to get some blinky plunky music now yeah this this specific session and maybe it was to do with my mindset at the time or whatever was going on in my life or i don't know maybe it was just the magic of this particular session but uh yeah it just it, it i felt myself go into a deeper meditation than I had ever been before. And I kind of sought out that type of meditation then when I was looking for those really deep uh, meditations. But yeah, I was, I was wondering if there was something like that for you in there and maybe there isn't, maybe, you know, it's just personal and stuff like that, but yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, there hasn't been anything like that for me, but that, I think it's important to say, doesn't overvalue or undervalue my experience. Yeah, yeah absolutely. This is very, it's a very unique uh, thing for everybody. But I do think it's an important thing to talk about and discuss. And I think it's an important tool for people with ADHD to utilize. Yeah, and I should say as well, actually, now that I'm kind of trying to actively remember, I feel like it wasn't the first time. I feel like I was quite experienced in mindfulness when eventually I went back to this seven day starter session yeah. or seven day starter course. And it was this time where that kind of elevated situation happened, that deeper meditation far into my mindfulness journey, if you want to call it that. Um, it wasn't just something that kind of happened on the cuff of the first time of me trying this seven day thing. Okay. I'm curious then if, if you fulfilled the challenge that I've issued you, if you go back and re-explore mindfulness, I wonder how, what your experience will be and how it will be changed by now being aware of your diagnosis and everything that has yeah. come after that. It would have been really good actually to kind of, and maybe I'll do this anyway, but to compare, you know, because obviously my original experience is pre-diagnosis. Yeah. It would have been nice to kind of have that post-diagnosis slash medicated side to compare now. But yeah, I'll, I'm going to start it tonight. I'm definitely going to do session one tonight. And uh, then when I do eventually get back to the medication, which I'm hoping I do, we can still do that comparison just the opposite way around. Yeah, sounds good. It sounds like a plan, sir. Lovely jubbly. I think we can leave it there. And I think I'll just remind people to help me along on my uh, fantastic Harv Hogue journey. And please remember to like, comment, and above all, subscribe. Give me the dream of the squishy, squishy <laughs> hug. We're going to have to get, you know, one of those uh, YouTube subscriber counter light thingies. Oh, yeah, like a, a countdown kind of thing. Like yeah. three, three subscribers till... Stephen gets his arms. He gets to bury himself in the oh, squashy Jesus marshmallowness right. of. We're gonna uh, have to fucking write up a, a contract on this uh, allowed physical activities. On this, <laughs> <laughs> no, who did we say was going to be HR? We need to get them hired ASAP. Oh, it's me. No, it's me. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm our representative. Uh, and no, this is all approved, so it's fine. Yeah, so please help us bring closer, bring us closer to that, uh, that dream and uh, give us all your feedback. And remember, as always, join the chaos. Nice one. Well.